Hi, this is FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. In the wake of the George Zimmerman not guilty verdict, we saw plenty of curious things in the media. Some outlets showed unusual concern for how Zimmerman's life might be changed by all this. After more than a year of restricted movement, Zimmerman has had his GPS monitor removed from his ankle. He can come and go as he pleases again, but Jeff, he will never have his whole life back. And we saw conservatives complaining that advocates for Trayvon Martin were the ones who were stirring up trouble. So you've got to understand that there's a grievance industry, and that industry is going to kick in whenever there's a minority controversy. Now that sentiment wasn't just heard from the right. The Washington Post editorial page slammed unnamed hucksters and political demagogues for exploiting the tragedy. But the biggest controversy was arguably the Post's columnist Richard Cohen, who argued in favor of racial profiling, both in the Trayvon Martin case and in New York City. After all, if young black males are your shooters, then it ought to be young black males whom the police stop and frisk. Some noted that Richard Cohen caused a similar controversy back in 1986 with a similar endorsement of racial profiling. The Post apologized back then. They're not likely to do that this time around. U.S. and Israeli government officials have been saying for the past two or three decades that Iran is right on the cusp of having a nuclear weapon. That day never came to be, and according to the available intelligence, Iran still doesn't have a bomb program now. But that's not the way that most corporate media see it. Here's CBS's Face the Nation last Sunday. And only on CBS, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Iran is dangerously close to having a nuclear weapon and is moving fast to develop an intercontinental missile that could deliver it to the United States. Now, host Bob Schieffer went on to say that Iran was making a continuing effort to build a nuclear weapon. That is incorrect. Netanyahu's claim that Iran is building ballistic missiles to reach the United States has been doubted by many weapons experts. It's puzzling that Netanyahu is even treated as an expert in all of this. But his overheated rhetoric generated stories about the Iranian threat in the New York Times and the Washington Post the next day, which is probably the point of going on the Sunday chat shows, venues where it is unlikely hosts are going to ask difficult questions. And finally, corporate TV networks can devote a lot of time, energy, and money to stories they deem newsworthy. That was the message of this New York Times story. The headline tells you all you need to know, really. The networks are sending anchors to report from London when the royal baby arrives. It's a story, of course, of little actual news value. But the networks have already decided otherwise. And they make such decisions all the time about what matters and what doesn't. Consider the trial of military whistleblower Bradley Manning the largest leak of classified documents in U.S. history, which produced countless news stories around the world about real matters of life and death. But Bradley Manning's trial isn't news. Back in June, the TV networks did brief reports about the beginning of the trial, and that was basically the last viewers heard or saw of it. It's not that they have no time available to do this. We're talking about three-hour-long morning newscasts, half-hour evening newscasts, Sunday chat shows, an hour every weekend. No, Bradley Manning isn't news, at least not as important as, say, a cheesy cable TV movie that almost no one watched. The Royal Baby is news even when there isn't any news. NBC's Kate Snow is in London tonight watching and waiting along with everybody else. And Kate, I understand that is the hospital behind you where we will know something at some point. It is, Brian, and about all we know right now is that at some point, Kate Middleton, the Duchess of Cambridge, will come to this hospital and give birth to a baby. What we don't know is where she and the prince are at this hour, or indeed her exact due date. And even the queen is getting anxious. That is news, according to the corporate media. I'm Peter Hart. This was FAIR TV.